Hello, this is Riverside Studios, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Canon 28 to 135 f3.5 to 5.6 IS. If I could summarize this lens in one word, it'd probably be meh. Overall, the build quality is not too great, um, and of course, it does have this weird, like, creep to it. When you hold it upside down, sometimes it, like, it loses the uh, zoom area that you were actually on. The zoom ring um, kind of speeds up as you zoom in, and um, it kind of feels a little, a little wobbly. Um, the the focus ring isn't too bad though and of course it does have uh, manual focus during autofocus overall the lens has a bit of plasticky feel to it the image stabilization is pretty good uh, here's just a test that I took of with it off and then with it on so as far as image quality goes it has um, you know fairly decent image quality all the way across the range um, however at like 5.6 you, you should expect the lens to be at least decently sharp in the middle um, and this lens is so I mean that's nice but you know good image quality usually comes from um, nice image quality at lower apertures another negative of this lens is the the fact that it changes apertures, which makes it really annoying. Um, even with the speed booster on my pocket center camera, um, it still changes from 2.2 to 3.2. Um, so it's a little bit annoying. You know, whenever you zoom in or change the zoom at all, the uh, you have to change all of your settings pretty much. So what do I use this lens for then? If it's you know so average. Um, well, the good thing about this lens is it only costs $150 used and $300 brand new. Um, so it's a fairly inexpensive lens, honestly, even compared to an 18 to 135 EFS lens. Um, one of the main problems I was running into trying to find a lens of like a similar aperture range was that many of them were EFS lenses. Um, and unfortunately my speed booster can only take EF lenses which are full frame um, and you know the biggest problem with that is the fact that full frame lenses don't need to zoom out as wide so like 28 and 24 are fairly wide on a full frame sensor but on like an APS-C sensor or my Blackmagic with its speed booster um, you know 28 and 24 are kind of like normal-ish on them so you know it's a little weird going from you know normal to telephoto you know it'd be really nice if there was like a wide area that it could go to like 18 which um, is only common on like EFS lenses so you know the two alternatives for this lens is the Canon 24 to 105 um, L lens, which is you know quite a bit more expensive, even used. Um, new, it's a lot more expensive. Um, you can check out my review on that lens. However, I did break my 24 to 105, um, which is why I decided to buy this lens instead. Now it's it's an okay replacement, but it's it's not really that great. Um, one thing it does have up on that lens is just the extra um, telephoto area, which is nice for more event type stuff. Um, but you know, the 24 has a little bit more wide angle and, you know, a, a bit better build quality than this lens, I would say. Now, alternative is if you don't need the full frame lens or you don't have like a speed booster or something that can't take EFS lenses 
you know, there's always the 18 to 135, which is kind of similar to this lens, but it, it goes a lot wider, which is really nice. And, you know, I think the build quality on the 18 to 135 might be a little bit better than this lens. Um, although the, the focus ring on that is a little bit more like focused by wire instead of this, um, this nicer system, which has the actual, you know, measurements on it, because the 18 to 135 is STM lens. Um, thanks for watching.